I'm Brian Dang. I'm from the PowerCat team. We support customers on the Power Platform. Uh, today, I've gathered together a group of speakers from a variety of different backgrounds. Uh, we are going to be exploring how they're all makers, and yet they have some common themes that they can speak to in the ways that they drive adoption of the Power Platform within their organizations. I'd like to welcome our first panelist, Robin Rosengrun. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at ENDW? Thanks, Brian. Yes, sure. Um, I'm a low-code enabler at ENBW. ENBW is uh, one of the major German uh, power and utility companies. And we are in a transitioning process from fossil and nuclear energy to renewable energies, charging infrastructure, and much more. And we are also experiencing a culture change in our company from a hierarchic structure to a more agile, faster moving company. And uh, one of the, as one of the first major German companies, we uh, switched to Microsoft 365 two and a half years ago. Um, in the last eight years, I'm, I was a mechanical engineer and using the tools you all know, like um, Excel, Access, and VBA to ramp up productivity in my teams. But uh, two years ago, after our switch to Microsoft 365, I started exploring the possibilities um, you have with the Power Platform, especially with Power Apps. After building the first few apps for my department, I wanted to reach out to other makers in my company and wanted to show what I did and wanted to see what uh, they built for their departments um, to become better at using the Power Platform. But I found out that not that many people in my company use Power Apps at all. So I needed to do something because I think these are awesome tools to bring more productivity to your department. Um, so I started offering webinars to everyone who wanted to know how to use the Power Platform and did some live coding events, um, uh, starting an app from Absolute Zero, a plain canvas, to a finished app in one to two hours. And uh, I, I reached really many people and um, enabled many people uh, using Power Apps for the first, first time. And a few weeks ago, our, our chief digital officer reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do this as my full-time job. And of course, um, I was thrilled to do the thing. Um, I love uh, full-time. And that's what I do big, uh, starting this April. And in this panel discussion, I want to talk a little bit uh, about what I'm planning to do as my first steps and what I think are the major challenges at this new role. Thank you, Robin, and congratulations on becoming a low code enabler at ENVW. Next, I'd like to welcome our second panelist. Azure, can you tell us about your role at GSK? Hi, Brian. Yes, thanks. Uh, so as Brian said, my name is Azure. I work as a senior bioprocess engineer for GSK, which is a pharma vaccine and consumer healthcare company. I work on the pharma arm and I support commercial drug manufacturing operations, uh, which is technical support and a side of project management. So really nothing to do with the power platform on my you know, everyday uh, job description. Uh, my background is in biochemistry and I had limited tech experience, so I learned HTML in the fifth grade because I thought it was cool. And then I had an experience using Linux in a computational chemistry lab um, that I did an internship with through high school and college. And then fast forward a few years, I was introduced to the Power Platform uh, through a Flow in a Day class back in December in 2019, and I fell in love with flows and here I am. I started posting some tutorials on how to do some basic flows in our GSK Rangers group, which is an internal Facebook group for the Power Platform. Uh, it's largely, it was at the time, largely Power Apps and Power BI use. And I caught the eye of the creator of the group. His name is Simon Owen, uh, one of the digital product owners at GSK. And he encouraged me to post a little bit more. And it led to me becoming an SME for Power Automate and then also being able to teach at GSK's first Power Platform Bootcamp that we created last year. Jor, can you tell us about some of the flows that you've made at GSK? 
Uh, sure. So the main bis business case that I'm using right now is I designed a flow to automate management of adverse safety events at my particular site. So at a manufacturing plant, we have everything from slip strips and balls to um, you know, electrical hazards. So there's a lot going on. So as a continuous improvement, uh, we don't have any official tracking system yet to manage these adverse events. And so it's been a very manual process for our safety team to handle where someone will submit a safety event through a SharePoint site, and then they would manually do all the communications between that affected employee and their manager, as well as all of the paperwork that's associated with it. So Word documents, PowerPoint presentations to explain what happened. Um, so I created this flow that's eliminated all of this manual work for the safety team at this point. Um, and so when somebody submits that adverse event, everything kicks off for them. And as a continuous improvement, I'm exploring adaptive cards uh, in order to help them even manage a little bit more, take some, some time off their plates. Thanks for giving us a, an overview of, of your role and this amazing group called the GSK Rangers. Next, I'd like to welcome our third panelist. Uh, Jonathan, can you tell us about yourself and what you do at the University of Wisconsin? Yeah, Brian, thank you. Um, I am Jonathan Hinkle, and I am working as the Director of Academic Planning and Assessment at the School of Human Ecology in the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I do not have any formal training in technology or application development. I started my career as a school counselor, supporting students transitioning from high school to college. And as you can imagine, there are enormous amount of logistics that occur through that process. And I developed a predilection for using technology to overcome those challenges. So in the end, I could spend more time working with the students themselves. I've been able to maintain this in my work in higher education, and now I help develop efficient processes around complex and shared business problems with the Power Platform. One recent example of this is a student onboarding solution I built. This was designed to better track students who came into the school through one of three methods. There's a central admissions and orientation process, a major declaration process, and a competitive program application process. So this solution collects and tracks students traveling through these different pathways. It then terminates in a reliable and accurate record for the school to better understand enrollments, trends, and more. So at a very high level, it's a very straightforward process, but administratively on the back end, to get all those ducks in a row, it takes a lot of planning and effort. And this solution uh, makes all of that possible. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing about the, the kind of apps that you've made uh, for uh, students. I'd like to bring back our panelists now so that we could do a Q&A. My very first question is, you've all taken the time to learn the platform, whether it's Power Apps, Power BI, uh, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. How do you help somebody else inside your organization get trained and upskilled as well? Let's start with uh, Robin. Robin, can you tell us more about the program that you've done at EMBW? Yeah, sure. I've got this idea lingering in my head for the last year or so, but never had the time to actually pursue it. Now, in my new role, I started something that I called the Power Pioneer Program. Um, I give 25 people the chance, or I give everyone in my company the chance to apply for the program. And I want to start with 25 people in this 12-week program from uh, zero Power Platform skills to their very own first app. Uh, in the beginning of the program, I want to teach everybody um, how to technically use the Power Platform, mainly Power Apps and Power Automate. And I will bring um, uh, I will bring in other experts from my company for stuff you also need to need to know while uh, working on your first app, like um, UX and UI and Agile development, for example. Mm. Thank you, Robin. Uh, next, I'd like to hear from you, Azure. You also have a program, uh, just like Robin has one. Can you tell us about the boot camps that you run? Sure. So last year, about this time, there was the idea by some of the global product owners that maybe we should start upskilling folks at GSK in the camp. I mentioned before that it was largely Power BI and Power Apps use, and we wanted to expand this a little bit further. Uh, so I had the opportunity to help develop and deploy a 10-week 
Power Platform Bootcamp, GSK's first, and it focused on UI, UX, Power Apps, Power BI, and Power Automate to enable employees to feel confident in building solutions to solve those business problems. Uh, so this invite was open to all employees at GSK Worldwide. We had about 100 applicants, and then we selected 20 to 25 to participate. And this all together took about six months to prepare from start to finish because we were creating our own curriculums, um, graduation schemes, final projects, and uh, determining what would be the criteria for graduation. So we held classes for about two hours per week on Mondays or Tuesdays, and then we'd have open office hours the rest of the days, which sometimes involved uh, getting used to getting up at like 4 a.m. to teach students, but it was a ton of fun. And then we would have like show and tell Fridays or, or help for people uh, to see what they've, they've built for their final project. So it was great to see folks rise in their proficiency because oftentimes they would know one part of the platform pretty well, but not as well versed in the others. Uh, so they've become baby SMEs or subject matter experts to bring back to their teams and provide these really wonderful solutions. And although that was the only boot camp that we taught last year as its first, uh, Right now, I'm helping other sites be able to deploy their own boot camps using some of the same material that we've used. So it's great to see that uh, sites, depending on like their time constraints and whatnot, can also want to enable their employees to, to use the platform. So what I'm hearing so far is you can set up a program uh, that runs a certain amount of time and even have a graduation like the boot camp. Uh, next, I'd like to hear from Jonathan. Jonathan, you also have a group uh, that you that you train up. Can you tell us about the builders group? That's right, Brian. I uh, I want to leave my the role that I'm in now, knowing that what I build while I'm here can be understood, maintained, and improved upon just as easily as I built it in the first place. I also want to share what I know about the Power Platform so that others can use the same skills to help themselves. Um, I'm I'm determined to build capacity in my school for the solutions. Uh, that we all create while I'm here. On top of this, I'm a collaborative person and the best apps I built uh, were the result of rich collaborations with the end users I was building them for. So we started this builders group at the School of Human Ecology. We have representatives from several, several units across the school and the goal has been to support and collaborate one another with the solutions that we create to improve our various business processes. There is a lot to learn, um, but it's so much more fun when you're doing that with a community. Got it. And I like that you have brought up community uh, because everybody here has uh, driven the, the adoption of, of the Power Platform within their organization, within these internal communities. But you've all also engaged with external communities. Um, Azure, can I start with you? Tell me how you've uh, interacted with the wider community outside your organization. Sure. So my friend who runs this Rangers community introduced me to a friend of his who operated a, a women in tech group called the Tech Stylers last year. They were looking for uh, someone to give a demo. And I gave my first demo last June in this group and things really took off from there. I was encouraged to update my LinkedIn and you know maybe start a YouTube or a blog, which I haven't quite gotten there, but I've been very active on Twitter now and uh, was urged to start speaking at conferences, being in this more beginner intermediate space. And it's been, a, it's been a really great trajectory, I have to say. I've met so many power addicts in the community. Um, I'm in a couple of group chats with folks who are always bouncing ideas off of each other. It feels exactly like a family. And on, on Twitter, I'm part of the, we call it the hashtag, the flow fam. Um, and over the course, like this has all happened over the course of the pandemic. So in one respect, it's I've taught myself something new, um, but also gained a lot of friends uh, in this space. And it's been a really incredible experience to be able to be a part of that. And then also impart this knowledge to others and get them excited about the platform too. Mm -hmm. And you take that knowledge back into your organization, right? You're improving the flows that you have, thanks to ideas that you find on the forums, Twitter, and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, I'd love to hear from uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, can you tell us about uh, the user groups that you belong to? Yeah, so after I got to a certain point with the Power Platform, probably after about a year, I really wanted to know if there were other users out there who discovered what I had. 
uh, and I really wanted to celebrate what I had learned with others while giving back to those who were just getting started. So I actually kicked off the Power Apps user group in Madison before I even started the Builders group. Um, so this group has grown to include people all throughout the university and even the state. Um, it's so much fun to have a place to put our shared enthusiasm for the platform. Uh, next, uh, Robin, you have reached a very broad audience as well. Can you tell me about how you in interact with the broader audience? Yeah, I asked myself, how did I learn using Power Apps? And like many others of you, I uh, started learning through YouTube videos. And then I, I checked, uh, I searched through YouTube and I saw that there was uh, no German YouTube channel who was talking about uh, Power Apps. So I started one. As you can see, I just uh, I just had the idea to put my head on the in the right uh, lower right corner of a picture and just uh, coding. So I bought a twenty dollar green screen and just started away. And it's been an, an amazing process for me, just learning new things like video editing and um, teaching Power Apps even more. Um, yeah. So I started my my German YouTube channel R2 Power. And it's, uh, yeah, I get lots of great feedbacks of people who just started Power Apps through me. And that's, I think, is an, an awesome feeling. And it's awesome to give just something back uh, to the community because everything I know, I learned from the community. So it's a pleasure just to give something back. What we've heard so far is a little bit about uh, how all of the makers that you see on this panel drive adoption within the organizations internally with training, upskilling. Um, they interact with the broader community outside of their organizations. Uh, what I'd like to hear next is you've, you've all put in so much work in, into being a maker. How has this impacted your career and your personal growth? Uh, let's start with Robin. Robin, can you tell me about, about, your, about your growth? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's been crazy two years for me uh, since starting using Power Platform because two years ago or even one year ago, I hadn't even in my mind to somehow um, yeah, fill in in a, a digital position because I was a mechanical engineer doing engineering stuff. And it just uh, grew on me uh, the whole time and I started getting better and better. And the as i as i told i'm my current position is a low code enabler and during the last two years i really started liking doing the enabling part so not just building app but enabling other people to um to use power apps and to use other low code tools and so yeah i'm i'm coming from a position that i really liked in my organization to a position that i absolutely love and and yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy I can do this uh, full time now. Now, Azure, you also mentioned you have a, a new career. Can you tell <laughs> us a little bit about that? Sure. So like Robin, I, you know, I'm a process engineer and I had never really given any thought to like being in tech. And uh, I call myself the non-tech techie just because I don't have that background. And with getting more proficient in Power Automate over the past 16 months or so, I've been able to take on an, a personal client of my own for a, a university in the United States and helping them improve some processes. But also now I'm transitioning roles in GSK and soon I'll be working as a data scientist, which not only is dealing with things like multivariate statistics for our manufacturing processes, but also I get to play with Power Platform a lot more, which I'm very excited about when I interviewed for the position, the automation director was like, we're going to teach you everything you need to know, just bring the power automate with you, which I thought was a fantastic way, you know, to upskill me, you know, promoting hiring internally, um, and also getting to do something that I love with GSK and continuing uh, to help our company develop into, you know, more digital space. Got it. And uh, Jonathan, tell us about how you've grown and the different roles that you've had. Yeah, so as a counselor, I've been trained to empower others by providing them with a sense of agency. I did that for 12 years as a school counselor in New York City, and it's enormously rewarding. But as I advanced in my career, I moved further and further away from providing direct student support. 
Fortunately, because of tools like those found in the Power Platform, I've been able to capture this same level of satisfaction by supporting others as they learn and develop skills to solve their own problems through the use of technology. It's actually very meaningful. It, this platform is all about providing agency to the people on the ground who are driven to make their lives more manageable, but it wouldn't be possible otherwise. I feel fortunate to be in a position to introduce this to others and support them in their journey to becoming a problem solver. It's incredibly rewarding. Got it. Now I'd like to give everybody a, a last word to share. Um, maybe I could start with Robin. Robin, what is one takeaway that you want people to have as they're adopting the Power Platform or training up inside their organization? Well, um, the, the most important thing for me is just start. It's uh, when I'm I'm reading comments under my YouTube videos, and they are like watching 10, 15 videos, but they don't start doing. And my yeah, my, my takeaway is just start, just do it, and uh, you will become better and better, and uh, your skills will grow really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Azure, what is one takeaway that you want the, your, the audience to, to know? I think Robin stole what I was going to say too, is really get, get started. <laughs> find, find somebody on YouTube or a blog uh, that you, you know, identify with and start to follow their tutorials. I mean, really the whole thing, at least with, with Power Automate is find something small that you want to automate. It doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to have a business use case quite yet. Could be something as simple as you want to send yourself a text message when you know something happens, say in a SharePoint list of your own, uh, and have fun with it. Really, that's the whole idea of this platform is that you don't need the tech background. You don't need the degree. You don't need any of that. This is something that can be fun for you as well to um, add some value to your life and hopefully to others as well. And Jonathan, what would you like to leave with everybody who's trying to get started on this uh, in, on this journey for adoption? Yeah, so I think two things. I think, first of all, give back. It's so easy to get to a certain point when you're learning how to use these tools and forget how you got there. All of the information that folks just freely post online and make available to kind of aid in your own personal development. Um, it's, it's such a great advantage to us to have that breadth of resources available to us. Um, so I say when you get to that point where you feel like you really mastered the platform, uh, don't hesitate to give back. Um, and then I would also say for those of you who are just getting started, reach out. Um, there are folks out there that just are thrilled and passionate about this platform and want to, uh, you know, be able to share that excitement with others. And, you know, if you're working on something and there's a problem that you can't solve or you hit up against a brick wall, uh, I guarantee you that uh, just by doing a little bit of reaching out that you'll encounter someone to assist you along the way. Thank you. I want to thank all of our panelists for being with us here today and sharing how they've uh, made things on this platform and then even enabled others inside their organizations to do the same. Thank you, everybody. After our conversation with these makers, we were fortunate enough to catch up with Christy McKenzie from Publix, and her story just fit right in. So here's Christy in her own words. I'm Christy McKenzie, and I work for Public Supermarkets as an Office 365 admin. My main role here is to help business areas simplify and automate their processes by leveraging Office 365 and the Power Platform. For over 10 years, I've worked in SharePoint building solutions using InfoPath and custom workflows. My, my first job out of college, I started working in SharePoint and became a SharePoint admin, and I haven't looked back since. Now, I am building all of my solutions in Power Apps and Power Automate which has opened up an entirely new world for me. One of the first solutions I worked on at Publix was the Paris Opportunity Tracker. The main goal was to help the team organize their opportunities, assign tasks to the business areas, and increase visibility of all active opportunities and tasks for each of these areas. By using SharePoint, Power Apps, and Power Automate, I was able to create a solution that simplified their process and increased visibility of the active opportunities and their associated tasks. An associate can go in at any time and view all open tasks that have been assigned to them, the status of those tasks, and post updates to the Paris team. 
This solution increased accountability for tasks that did not exist before by allowing managers and directors to view the assignments at any time. These task comments provide a running conversation regarding a particular task, which was lost in emails before. Overall, this has increased productivity and visibility, which is a big win in my book. I was tasked with creating an app that would contain store address information, phone numbers, hours, and management information for field associates to access while they are out visiting stores. After getting the data pushed into SharePoint, I was able to build an app in a few days and publish it for the field associates to use. This app allowed the associates to call the store directly from the app and launch Google Maps with the store's address and have the names of the managers at their fingertips. And it allowed people who had been storing store information on their phones, they were now able to clear the information from their phones and use the app instead. Um, prevented someone from accidentally calling a store when their kids are scrolling through their contacts. <laughs> because it was useful information, I allowed everyone in the company to access the app. Um, we just didn't announce it. Through word of mouth, the app gained popularity since it was really useful. Other departments have since taken that data from this app and brought it into their own apps, including information relevant to their own area. I created the Office 365 Innovators Group to empower and educate our associates on the Power Platform and to foster collaboration across the company. This group has allowed us to share our knowledge about Power Apps and Power Automate and create a space for associates to ask questions and help others. Anytime I find a blog or video that helps me, I make sure to share it to one of the channels. That way, anyone who comes across the same roadblocks can use the information that I have found. When I came to Publix, I was given the opportunity to deep dive into solutions and convert them from using info platforms and custom workflows to Power Apps and Power Automate solutions. The Power Platform has really challenged me on so many levels and ignited this passion inside of me that I didn't even know I had. Um, I'm always excited and eager to simplify and automate business processes and help others do the same. I absolutely love my job and I feel like this is really what I was meant to do. Um, I'm really looking forward to all the new features that are coming out um, and learning more and more every day of how to make things a little bit better for everyone else.